So World Rugby have launched their official World Cup fantasy game. Let's give it a crack. I've created a league alongside Tim from Egg Chasers. We'd love you to join. It's just a bit of fun. I mean, there are prizes every week for where you're placed in the global league as well. But this is a league where you can compete against your friends, compete against fellow viewers, and most importantly, try and beat myself and Tim. I'm sure you will. Let's get into it. A little bit of an intro. I'm going to pick my team, explain my thinking. If that helps, maybe you just do the opposite. Maybe that is the best uh, port of call there. And we'll go through the players and see who's actually the most valuable in each position and see if we agree. So first of all, obviously, you've got to pick 15 players. Normal rugby rules apply to team selection. Have a little look at the rules of the game. It's pretty cool. You've got to select a captain for each round that scores double points. Um, and there's unlimited transfers. You can just keep on changing it as much as you like. Obviously, make sure the players you picked are actually playing. You get to play three boosters. Um, I think you get to play them once each in the pool rounds and then once each in the knockout rounds. Uh, and the boosters are triple captain, where your captain would triple their points for that match. Super kicker, which doubles the kicker's scores, but also doubles any negative scores for missed kicks, which is pretty cool. And defensive king, which def uh, doubles defensive scores as well. Like I said, unlimited transfers. Scoring, well, there's loads of ways to score in this game. It's pretty cool, to be honest. Just playing gets you points. Playing more than 60 minutes gets you two points. Tries there, 15. Try assists are pretty high with nine. So think about which players will actually assist on tries. Miss kicks, like I said, will lose you points. Penalty goals, all of that. Red card and yellow card, pretty hefty fines. Five and minus 10 for a red there. And we're going to see plenty of cards, I am sure. Interceptions, turnovers, lineouts, tackles, lineout errors are minus as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, meters, you get a point for every 10 meters gain. So just making yards is big here. Line breaks and assisted line breaks, which is pretty cool. And for scrums, one outright awarded to the entire front row, uh, given to props and hookers, just to actually give, you know, a little bit extra to the props and hookers because they always get left out in these games don't they? Okay, so let's pick an example team for the first kind of round of games. I mean, if you really want to maximise your score, you keep on changing depending on who's playing next. But I'm going to say I'm picking a team and then leaving it for a week, which is an okay way to do it as well. But if you want to maximise, you keep on changing. So let's go scrum half to start with. Who is the top dog at scrum half? Antoine Dupont, and no uh, surprise there at 11. Then Aaron Smith, Faf de Klerk. Jameson Gibson Park, maybe he's worth a punt as well. Who's not worth their points? Always worth having a look there. Maybe Ben Young's is a little bit high. But I'm looking at Australia playing Georgia first up. And I'm going to guess they're going to play Tate McDermott. Obviously, have a look to see who's playing nearer the time. And I'm going to say he's going to have an absolute field day, create loads of tries, maybe score one as well. Let's have a look at fly half. Who's top dog in fly half? Finn Russell, goodness me, he'll be a great pick at some point, but 13 points, pretty hefty. Sexton, Mwanga, Jalabert there at 13, straight in with Jalabert. Even though Intermac is injured, they still rate him as one of the top dogs. And then Bowden Barrett, I mean, Farrell's down at 11, even though he's not going to play for a while. Pretty interesting. Okay, who am I going to go for? Well, I'm actually going to pair him up with Carter Gordon and saying those two are going to have an absolute field day. Carter Gordon's going to miss no kicks which hasn't happened so far, but you never know. On to the centres. Obviously, two of these. Who are the top ones? Uh, Radradra, uh, Yuane, Fiku. Really, really good players there. Plenty to pick from. Yeah, some pretty exciting players. I'm going to have fun playing around with these. Well, maybe Tupalutu is a good shout because he always creates tries. So I'm going to go for, I'm going to treat myself with my first centre. We've got Ireland here playing Namibia first up. So let's go ring rows. Say he scores a load, doesn't miss a tackle, has an absolute storm. I need to save a little bit of points, but also I see Italy are playing Namibia. So maybe I'll go for one of my favourite players, Brex, an absolute beast of a player. Ring Rose and Brex, pretty good centre partnership in real life. Looking at the outside backs and who is the most expensive? Well, Damien Pernod, absolutely no surprise there. Might be worth getting anyway. Mapimpi, interesting they've gone Mapimpi 10. Great player, but maybe there's other more dangerous wingers out there i am going to take ramos but i'm going to take him last so it looks like he's playing fullback 
Yes, in the last video, I actually got a picture. There is Jamine kicking, but I do like Ramos a lot. Quality player. Maybe use him some point as my uh, triple kicking points. But anyway, I'm going to go for a slightly cheaper one to start with. There it is. Ravatumeda of Fiji. So impressive in his last game. And a steal, I think, at 6.5. So here's my first pick. On to my next pick, I'm going to go for a slightly more expensive player. I'm going to go for Mac Hansen. Where is he? There he is there. Eight points. But again, Ireland playing Romania. He could score a hatful there. And then finally, yeah, let's pick Ramos at 15. It's just outside backs. It doesn't really matter, but I like to make it look nice. 9.5, very expensive, but I think he could score an absolute hatful. It does look like France are going to take their points when they're on offer, especially because he is so good. OK, up into the loose forwards, Josh van der Fleer, the most expensive, alongside Khaleesi, Aldrit, Doris, Peter Steff de Toy, awesome players. I'm going to splash out and take Josh van der Fleer, probably making my captain a bit later as well, double up the points. Next loose forward, who did I go for? I'm going to go for Luatua of Samoa. He's going to go through a stack of tackles, play a lot of minutes, set up a lot of tries. Here's my man there, and at six points, an absolute steal, especially because they are playing Chile in that first game. I'm going to go for Michael Leach at five. Again, absolute bargain, even more of a bargain, and Japan are playing Chile first up, and he is very creative. They leave him out wide on the wing quite a lot as well, as well as going through a stack of work. So let's look at the locks at the second rows. We've got Eben Etzebeth. You can see I've already reached my limit on Ireland, so I can't pick any of those. Etzebeth, the top guy, alone there on nine. Then you go down to the New Zealand locks. And then I'm actually going to pick Big Will Skelton. Really liking Skelton. Maxing out my Australia players, like I say, playing Georgia. And my second pick is a bit of a steal again. Another Italian, I think, in the first round. Five points. There he is, Canone. Got to have a Canone brother in there, at least. He is all action, all over the place, that young second row. So having a look at Hooker, who is the top dog? It's Malcolm Marks, and that'd be a great pick, although he does share the game time a lot with Mbanambi, so maybe losing a few minutes there to do stuff. Jamie George, also top dog. He's not going to miss many lineouts, but is he going to make loads of meters and breaks? I'm not sure that's the greatest pick, to be honest. Now, I can't afford Marks at this point. I'm going to go for another bargain Italian player, BG. I think Italy are going to have a great time against Namibia. BG hitting his line outs in all those malls, maybe getting on the back of the mall, scoring some tries. Then props. Who am I going to pick for a prop? Well, who is the top dog? Furlong. Couldn't have him. Kits off. He would be good. But I'm going to splash out. I'm going to be patriotic. I'm going to take one Englishman at least. I think the most dangerous Englishman, Ellis Genge there. Let's see if he can get a try against Argentina. It's a bit of a, a heart pick, if you like, rather than head pick. But hey, I can afford one. And then, yes, I am massively out of points. 2.5, I think I've got left. I'm going to go for Sethi, my favourite Namibian prop. Um, or is it just that I'm out of points? Anyway, that is my team. You can do it as many times as you like. You keep on changing right until kickoff. Have a good time with it, guys. It is a lot of fun. Join that league. Code is on the screen there. It's an Egg Chasers and Rugby Analyst League joint. So compete against us. Make sure you beat us. Let me know who you're picking. And I'll catch you next time.